This video will be about solving equations. So when you are working with an equation, an equation is any mathematical expression that has an equal sign. So if we took 2x plus 5, that is just an expression. To make it an equation, we'd have to say equals 10. We'd have to equal something. So when we're solving equations, it's all about knowing our opposite operations. An equation is kind of like a balance, a seesaw. And on your seesaw, the equal sign is the point where you would tip. So if we had our seesaw, right now it's balanced. We have a kid on this left side, a kid on the right side, and they weigh the same amount. As soon as we put anything else onto our equation, if I put another person on this side, our seesaw would no longer be balanced. We would have it tipping. This side would be heavier. So when we do our equations, we have to put the same things on both sides so that we would balance back out. If I put another person on the right side that was the same weight, our seesaw would balance back out. So we, what we do to one side we have to do to the other and we're going to be choosing to do our opposites so that we can move stuff around in the way we want. So opposite operations, opposite of addition is subtraction. Opposite of multiplication is division. So let's do an example. Let's say we have x plus 5 equals 17. And we want to get x alone. Right now, we're balanced. But our ultimate goal is to get this letter x alone, which means we want to move this 5 somehow. Now, I really can do whatever I want to an equation. So I'm going to write some stuff down that, if you're writing notes along with this, you should not write down. I really, if I wanted to, I could add 200, as long as I do it to the other side. The only problem is, if I add 200, that's not going to help me get x alone. It just changes the 5 to a 205. So that wasn't helpful to me. I could do it, but it's not going to help me. So what we always choose to do is we choose to do the opposite so that it gets rid of stuff. So we said the opposite of addition was subtraction. So we're going to choose to minus 5 because 5 minus 5 is 0, which gets rid of the number 5 here. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 17 minus 5, I also have to do that will give me 12. And if there's something I didn't do anything with, I just bring it down. So I'd have x plus 0 equals 12. Well, usually we skip the step of writing in the 0, because x plus 0 is just x. So usually, instead of writing the 0 in, all we would do is say, well, the 5s will cancel bring the x down, bring the equal sign down, and then do the other side, 17 minus 5 is 12. Same idea if we started with an equation that had minus. Let's say I have 8 equals x minus 12. Now this time our x is on the right side, but our goal is still to get x alone. So if we want to get x alone, we have to move the 12 next to it somehow. Again, we're going to do the opposites. Opposite of minus is plus. So we're going to add 12 to both sides. Now I draw that line in the middle, so I make sure I'm on both sides of that line. I'm on the right side of the line and on the left side of the line when I add that 12. So the 12s cancel because they were opposites. I bring the x down and 8 plus 12 is 20. So that takes care of our addition and subtraction, what, but what about multiplication and division? So multiplication and division 
there's some things you kind of have to assume, unfortunately. First of all, they're never going to write in that it is multiplication. Really, when you have the letter X next to a number with nothing written in between, there's a multiply sign. But it's assumed that you know there's a multiply sign there. So they're not going to write the multiply sign in. You have to do that yourself. Once you know that it's multiplication, then we can do division. So just like with addition and subtraction, we were trying to get rid of stuff. Division is going to get rid of the threes and leave you with just the x because division is the opposite of multiplication. But still, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So now we do 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So there's our final answer for that problem. And our last one would be division. If we start dividing something, we still have to do the opposite. Now, our division sign is written in. It's not the old school divide sign. It's just the line now. Looks like a fraction because fractions are really just division problems that you can actually complete the division for we still have to do the opposite. And we know the opposite of divide is multiply. If there is a negative with the three, when you're dividing, you do need to multiply by negative three as well. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. Again, the divide and the multiply are opposites, so that gets rid of the two numbers we were working with. We can just bring the x down now and then on the left side, we're just going to multiply negative 3 times 12 is 36. So that ends our discussion on solving equations.